What is up guys? Today we're going to be doing a part two of the do's and don'ts of Angela's paints. Let's start with our first don't. Let's say you find a pair of shoes online for a steal, but they've already been customized by someone else. Your plan is to paint them into the color you've been dying to have. Instead of prepping them before painting, you decide to add coats of your color on top. <laughs> What you would want to do here is use Angela's Preparer and Deglazer to strip as much paint off as you can before adding your color to the newly prepared surface. Doing this will ensure a better bond to your surface and the new set of paint that you're laying down. Our next do is to use a correct brush size when painting different areas of your canvas. I like to use a number two round brush when painting large text and then go in with a number zero detail brush to get the tight edges and curves of the smaller parts of the letters. Our next do is how important it is to add the correct amount of paint additive to your mixtures. For the new Toothic product, it's important to add the right amount before the product gets too clumpy. I like to add about 10% to get the perfect smooth texture. Let's take a look at what this mix looks like when too much toothic is added. You start to get this super clumpy cottage cheese type texture and this is your telltale sign that you may have added too much additive to your paint. If too much of this is added, this will affect the paint's flexibility once it's on its surface. Every additive has a different ratio so it's best to refer to the instructions to get the proper paint to additive in your mixes. Here's a quick and easy do when it comes to taping your shoes before painting. Instead of going through the hassle of adding tape around your area, we can use a super handy method of taping and cutting. All we need to do is tape the area over completely. In this case, we'll be taping over the swoosh and then using our finger to create an indent around the cut lines. From there, we can just grab our X-Acto knife and cut around those indented lines we just created. Once we remove the excess tape, we have a ready to paint swoosh that took a lot less time to prep. This leads us to one of our biggest don'ts, especially with super opaque colors like black, which is adding too few coats of your color. A lot of the time when customizing, it might be tempting to only add one coat of paint. This will create a weak and brittle surface that can easily be scratched off. For wearable customs, it's important to add at least four coats. For small details, line work, and something that won't be worn, such as a canvas painting, one to two coats or saturation until your desired outcome is fine. Here are some major don'ts for your airbrush. Now, one of the worst things ever is going to use your airbrush, pulling the trigger, and finding out your gun is clogged. One reason for this is you may not have thinned the paint before running your airbrush color. Angela's paint can be run through an airbrush straight out of the bottle if the nozzle is 0.5 millimeters. But if you want to thin the paint even more for an easier flow, you can mix with too thin. So a big do that can be done here is mixing too thin in a jar before pouring in, or my preferred method, mixing in the gun. With too thin added, the thick paint becomes thin enough to run through your gun nice and smoothly. This brings us to another huge don't, which is not cleaning your airbrush in between uses. And this is another big reason as to why your airbrush might be clogged. I like to clean my airbrush up by using the Angelus brush cleaner as well as the airbrush cleaning kit. What I do is add some brush cleaner into the gun, cover the nozzle tightly with a paper towel, and pull the trigger until I start to see bubbles appear in the paint capsule. When we spray the solution out, you'll notice that the capsule of paint will be a lot cleaner without the hassle of using a towel and not being able to get in those tight spaces. From there, I'll just use a Q-tip to get any leftover paint out. To use our airbrush cleaning brushes, we'll need to take apart our gun. So we'll just unscrew the back piece, unscrew the screw on the back as well, take off the nozzle, unscrew the smaller nozzle piece off, and then push the needle from the back through the front of the gun. This micro nozzle is where most of the clogging will come from, so we'll want to use one of the smaller needles included in the airbrush cleaning kit to scrape out any chunks of paint in there. We can then use one of the mini size brushes included in the kit to push through the front of the gun to clean out the tunnel where the paint flows through the nozzle. Now that we've gone over over the do's and don'ts of Angela's paints, let me know in the comments below if you learned anything new that you'll be applying to your next project. Thanks so much for watching and catch you guys next time.